Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by fellow licensed massage therapist, Abby Myers in Illinois. Hello and welcome. Hi, it's good to be here. Thanks so much. You're here in my continued effort to interview a fellow therapist from all 50 states. I'm moving right along here. Yeah. And I appreciate you being here. So I usually kick things off with uh, an origin story. If you could tell me how you came to massage in the first place. Yeah, well, um, you know, for me a massage, uh, I didn't actually know exactly what I wanted to do. I knew that I liked working with people. I knew that I wanted to kind of do something more one-on-one. Um, I really played around with nursing a little bit, but I, the idea of doing the blood draws or even just in school for that, it was just too much for me. I, uh, so I didn't do that. Then I thought about a dental hygienist. Um, so kind of, it was all around like healthcare, but, um, I'd had a few massages in high school actually, um, for some sports injuries and I just decided why not? Right. So Um, I think another thing that kind of pushed me towards it was I was working at a physical therapy and fitness gym and they had, um, massage therapists there. So just kind of getting to see their interaction with their clients, um, was encouraging to me. Well, that's great. So that, so then you found your way there and you've been at it for over 16 years now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I want to, I just want to talk, talk about one thing from your origin story you had. Like, so I, I feel like not enough young people get experience with massage therapy and you had it as a result of an injury mm-hmm. when, you're, when you're as an adolescent, but I feel like, do you, do you see young people getting massage in, in your part of the country? Um, like, I think it depends on your clientele and what your policies are. Like, um, I actually, I maybe compared to some therapists, it's kind of hard to say I might've worked with more, uh, minors than others. Um, earlier in my career, I, well, this probably would have been around maybe 10 years into nine years into my career. I actually, um, worked with, um, a local high school and did massage therapy for their track team. The coach oh. had it in their budget and I went, um, it was like twice a week. I went to the meets with them. Um, I was also an alumni of the school and a huge track cross country fan, but, um, yeah, I did massage on the athletes. Um, and it was a fabulous experience. Um, did they ever say like, Oh, this seems to be helping our runners run better. Well, the coach, um, was a collegiate athlete and she had had massage therapy at the college level. Um, as part of her training. And so she was the one advocating for it. Um, they got it approved from our, um, what do they call this, um, sports administrator type person at the yes. school. So it was in their budget. Um, and, uh, the girls also, I was with the girls team. Um, they could do some fundraising to do it. So normally like kind of the athletes that were a little bit more, um, uh, kind of the top athletes had top priority and then other athletes, if they, at some point when they were kind of running out of funding, you know, they kind of had to like help, you know, if they sold more sweatshirts or whatever, oh. they went towards some of the massage. They didn't pay me directly. The coach did. And, oh wow! but it was a really cool experience. I did that for two years. That's so neat. I really like that. I, I keep trying to promote this idea that, so I have, I have kids, they're six and eight and I know you have kids too. Mm-hmm. And my eight year old loves his table time. Yeah. And, and so, and, and there's a lot of value there and it's, and I do believe that young people, they're, they benefit from the work physically. But to me, it's even more about teaching young people the value of it so that they understand it's something that they can go to as they grow up. Like, I didn't know, I didn't know I could go get a massage when I was in my twenties to make myself feel better. Like it wasn't, but if we teach them now, then they'll know later. Yeah. Um, Promote that more. I'm curious. I haven't, I mean, the people on the team, it's been, like I said, probably, I don't know, I'm trying to come years ago. It's been several years, right? Uh, I haven't really kept in contact, but I'm kind of curious how many of them um, are getting massage now that hadn't. It was uh, really a cool experience because most of my massage work is more focused on relaxation. And if you've been in a gym with like 20 teams and there's so many girls on the team and you're up, they've got their tents and all this stuff, it's the opposite of a relaxing environment, you know, we're cheering, I'm massaging someone and cheering for this other person. It was just totally different. Um, but therapeutically like that, you know, working on the muscles was still there. It was just really a different 
different experience than what I usually do. You do. work on your own kids? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Are they into it or no? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> they would like more massage. Um, but, uh, you're like, I worked all day. I'm not working anymore. <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. A couple of my kids, I mean, I could do it for hours with them. Right. Like they, right. you know, just, and I have four kids like, no, it's not happening. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Did you want to share any other considerations you have around seeing youth and adolescents in your practice? Yeah, uh, that's something that I kind of, I feel like our school didn't really talk about, but that I've learned um, over the course of years. Um, currently, I only see clients if they're minors, if their um, parent or guardian are in the room the whole time. So that really does significantly de decrease the number of minors I see, um, especially because my hours are during school days. So uh, I have had some students that, um, that will come to me um, even during school hours, um, but I require their parent to stay with them. And when I was working with the girls track team, um, I was always with like tons of people, right? It wasn't like just me in a room with a minor. Yeah. There were, I don't know how many other people in the room because it was not, they were wearing um, their track uniform or whatever. It was a practice, their practice clothes. Um, which usually were short. So the main thing I worked on with them were legs. Um, but yeah, so just, I would say with minors, um, I think it's really important that we um, have someone else in the room. And I have had pushback from um, clients of mine say, oh, I trust you. I think it's not just that the the patient, our minor also, they've never met me before if that's their first mm -hmm. time. I want them to feel comfortable. And if mom or dad or grandma, whoever their guardian is, is there, then, then they feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think in some places that's required, basically. It might be, actually. Yeah. I don't know. I just, yeah. um, like I said, whenever I first started the track team, it wasn't really something that I thought about. But thankfully, there were a lot of people there um, because they had had a massage therapist previously, um, but she had moved or didn't have time. I'm not sure um, exactly. But when I yeah. stepped into the role, they kind of already had it. This is how we do it, you know. And oh, so, yeah, yeah. that's right. Well, that's great. Okay, so let's jump over to becoming a massage therapist and maintaining a license in the state of Illinois. Yeah. Okay, well, in Illinois, I think it's kind of similar to other states. It seems kind of standard to require similar stuff. So we need 600 hours from a accredited school. And then we do the MBLEX here. Um, it used to be the NCTMB exam. Um, and if you... Uh, already had a license somewhere else or previously took the exam, they'll accept that through the year 2015. Um, and then once you're licensed, um, I think like other people, you know, we need fingerprints, background check, you know, pay your money, that sort of thing. Uh, we have continuing education, 24 hours, um, two hours in ethics every two years, one hour sexual harassment, and 12 hours can be online. Oh, pretty straightforward then. Yeah. The only thing in addition to our state license that you might need is um, like a city or county permit. And my city does require that. Oh. Um, so you have to, uh, it's kind of an extra hurdle to go through. I actually have been working on getting rid of this because it was developed before our state had licensing. Oh. But um, we have to have the fire department come out. We have to sign a bunch of stuff saying we're not doing like sexual activity. Um, right. So yeah, it's kind of an extra uh, fee extra hoops. Wait, do they have to inspect your space? Yeah, at my physical oh. space. They come out and take a look. Um, so, yeah. Huh. So, okay, so that's becoming a therapist there. That seems pretty straightforward. Uh, as we record, it's May 25th, 2020. We're still in the midst of uh, the crisis, the COVID crisis. Can you <sighs> give me a little, yeah, <laughs> deep breath. <laughs> Can you give me a little <laughs> sense of how that unfolded in Illinois and where you're at with that? Yeah. Okay. So in Illinois, um, I stopped practicing. My last day in practice was March 11th. Um, and then I had a couple of days off. And then that next week was trying to decide if I was going to work, not work. Um, but our actual stay in place order did not start until uh, I should have written it down. I think it's March 20th. Okay. It was like a Saturday. Um, so just about a week, um, after I had stopped working, um, and then our stay in place is actually still in order until May 29th, I believe it is, um, which is next Friday. But we just found out, let's see, today's Monday, uh, last Wednesday, we were going to be in phase four for opening, which would have been July. 
but we got moved to phase three, which is opening May 29th. So oh. less than a week ago, found out like, oh my gosh, I got to figure this stuff out now. Um, three to, phase three to phase four is that much different. It's about four weeks. I mean, it depends on um, the metrics. Like if, you know, if there were to be more people that get sick, then it would get pushed back. It wasn't like a set, um, you know, it depended on how things went. But the soonest it could have been was going to be July 1st. Now it's, you know, basically June 1st. Okay. And are you preparing for that? Reopening I, that time? Or are you waiting more or less? That's the stress. Um, yeah. yeah. I was really planning on waiting until July, thinking that I would be able to receive um, on a, like PUA benefits right. until July. Now I think that may not be available to me. So if I'm legally able to work and choose not to. So now I'm trying to kind of figure out um, how long can I afford not to work? Um, kind of go from there. So yeah. that's been a little stressful. Um, in our state guidelines, uh, it's interesting because I mentioned we've got county guidelines um, for me and state guidelines. So our state guidelines um, are pretty similar to, I kind of wrote them down here, um, others where we have to have like the EPA, you know, approved disinfectants, that sort of thing. Um, here, let's see, we do have to have both people wear masks the whole time. Um, it requires an employee to, to have their temperature taken. Um, we're also, this is kind of a big thing, uh, not allowed to do sessions more than 30 minutes. So... I can see someone, but there's so much time, right? To like do all the cleaning and uh, let things rest. Like as far as the um, cleaners, uh, that right. yeah, I don't know. That so that's kind that of a big really a- effectively hurt your income. Yeah, yeah. Because you exactly. have to do short, less expensive sessions, but still take this like all these further measures. Like, how much time did you normally have between clients? Um, hold on, let's check the store here. Uh, I normally had 30 minutes in between clients. Um, so I was thinking maybe 45 minutes. Um, I'm actually going to call my county uh, tomorrow when they open on Tuesday because with my county guidelines, um, in addition to the not, you know, following the state guidelines, ours are a little more strict. Um, I have to wear gloves. I the wording was a little odd. I can't tell if I need to wear a disposable gown. They also said all disposable materials. So I don't know if I need disposable sheets. I know they make those, but I think that's a lot of waste. So they put us in with, um, the grouping for us was tattoos, barber shops, and massage therapists. So like care salons were different. I'm not sure. So I mean, I obviously like, uh, I mean, if, if you're not watching the video, like I don't have any hair, so I don't go to barber shops, but right. That must take more than 30 minutes, right? Like, yeah. So (laughs) I'm just, like I said, trying to figure out if I'm going to, you know, how, how it's all going to work for me. It's been a little, a little crazy. Um, so I thought I had till July and now I have till like today's Monday. I have till Friday. And meanwhile, that your clients may have seen that news and and started calling and saying like, Hey, we can come back. Right. I've had a couple people call me. Um, I think most of my clients I messaged earlier, just telling them I don't have a set opening date. Um, And so I think most of them kind of know. I tend to be a more cautious person. So um, like I said, just trying to figure out how long I can handle um, not working without being paid and kind of rate, you know, weigh these risks and benefits. So yeah, all the weighing all the risks and benefits and just making these really challenging choices is uh it's been an interesting time and a difficult time for sure yeah as far as going back to work it's been um i think probably for a lot of therapists a big struggle um and i definitely fall into that category i think there's the ones that you know feel like we can't work for 12 18 months and there's others that feel okay working now and i'm like i'm in the middle right like Mm -hmm. i uh, ideally i would really like to wait to work how long that is is going to depend on financially, how long I can hold off, um, what changes come up between now and then, like I said, my state, um, we're able to go back, uh, this Friday and we just got guidelines yesterday about the PP, um, E we need, Mm -hmm. um, my County gave guidelines. I just got these things and I don't, you know, prior to knowing what I'm going to need, I didn't purchase things. So I don't have the stuff right now. Right. Um, so I just don't really know. I got a, it's one of those conversations I thought that we were going to have till July. Um, yeah. Just found out less than a week ago. I have, oh, you know, now less than a week. So it's kind of all come in and I need to figure out 
you know? So, I mean, am I booking for Friday? No. Am I planning on working next week? I just, I don't, I don't, I don't have the PPE. I can't first off. And then I just need to figure out. So I out. guess we can, we can just say the situation is very fluid and we kind of need to yeah. roll with it as it, as it evolves. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm looking yeah. into finding out from unemployment exactly what the stipulations are. Um, if you choose not to open, um, talk to my banker on Friday about maybe doing the PPP loan. I didn't do that previously. Um, so I'm going to kind of exhaust whatever resources I can and um, try and make the best decision for my practice. What do you think, how do you feel like our, our, our profession, our industry will, will be different after this? Maybe a more global perspective. Um, I, well, I, I definitely feel like massage will still be around. Um, I think that it's going to change. I feel like more for people that work at like a chain type place than people that are self-employed. The re- and I guess the reason why I say that is if you're self-employed, um, you can have more ability to choose what you're going to do, right? Like if I want more time to clean between clients, I can take that time. Yeah. Um, whereas if I'm an, uh, an employee somewhere that doesn't give me that amount of time, I have to hurry, hurry, hurry. Right. So I think that the chains are going to change more because, um, I, you know, you kind of hear these stories about people that stack sheets, right? They have sheets upon sheets and just take off another set of sheets. So things like that, um, sharing the blanket, uh, maybe not just disinfecting the top of your little lotion holder, that sort of thing. Um, I think those are going to be changes. And if you work at a chain, they're going to have to allow more time for that. And I think it'll be good. I mean, I worked at some of those places earlier in my career and I mean, it was ostensibly, supposedly like, you know, 10 minutes at the front, five minutes at the front and the back of the, of the table time, but it always added up to zero. Cause like <laughs> the next person was always there and you were just yeah. like barely having enough time to turn the table before they were. Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to really need to expand their timeline for a business model to, to operate. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that it's going to change in allowing therapists more time between sessions just because it's needed. Um, as far as like, if, people are not going to work anymore. I think massage therapists will still work. I think things will eventually calm down in about, I don't know, a year or so, maybe less. Um, and we'll go back to not needing gloves. Hopefully I won't need to change my clothes <laughs> between every session. I won't have to have these signs that my, uh, county requiring posted at my facility. So, yeah. Interesting. So, uh, while I have you here, someone with so much experience, I, I like to, to, to get a take on this when I can. So you've been at this for over 16 years. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a younger therapist about longevity in, in the career of massage therapy? I think the number one thing, um, is to enjoy what you're doing by being able to pick the clients you want to work with. Mm. Um, and I know a lot of people will say, you know, body mechanics, I mean, you do need to take care of yourself, but I feel like the bottom line is, if you love your clients, you love the style you're working on, you're getting to choose the type of work you do, mm-hmm. you're going to stick with it, right? Like, I don't have to work with clients that want me to like, you know, um, that are kind of no pain, no gain type client. No, I don't have those. Mm. I say very clearly in my website, you know, that I'm focusing on um, mental, um, like feeling better mentally and physically. So I do work on tension, but my clients know, I mean, a huge part of it, every massage I do is just relaxation. And, um, I think that's a big, um, part of me loving what I do is that I can kind of choose those clients. So I feel like that's the number one key to longevity is finding the clients you like, being able to work with the clients you like, not working with the clients you don't like, and then, um, financial stability, right? Yeah. That all makes a lot of sense. So, and one of the things that you focus on in your practice is, uh, headaches, headache relief. Tell me what what sort of interventions you you have found the most effective over time and what you like to do um, or how you advise people, like what you tell them to do when they're at home or, and versus right. what you do in the office. If someone comes in with an active headache. Uh, well, most of my clients um, have their headaches, not, I mean, they might have it when they come in, but theirs are like chronic headaches, right? Like they get them. And a lot of, I work with dentists, uh, dental hygienists, people, hairdressers, people that have their hands up a lot, or like people that work at the computer. So um, some of my work is kind of axillary, right? Like working on the scapula, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, yeah. from both sides. Um, I also like a lot of it is just the stress. They're bringing their shoulders up, uh-huh. kind of staying like this. So getting them to relax, 
kind of loosen things up. Um, so I don't give them a lot of exercises to do at home. Um, I guess I just don't really do that. Uh, usually if they come in with headaches, depending on how often they're getting them, how severe they are, I'll increase frequency um, for treatment, like how often they oh, come yeah. in. Um, I guess it's not really treatment here in um, Illinois, but you know what I'm saying? Like I'll, I'll come yeah. in more often at first, kind of get to where they're not getting headaches as often and then I'll slow it down. So like maybe just once every two weeks, even some people once a month, it's enough to kind of um, keep their headaches from coming back. Yeah. That's good. I've been trying to like build up my repertoire of approaches to different topics and headaches that seem to be a, something that comes up a lot for me. So for yeah. I guess it's kind of hard to, you know, like I don't have a specific modality. It's just, I mean, a lot of like, I guess, um, colds at the, you know, base of the head here, yeah. a lot of work like on the face, which is going to be sad for COVID now because I can't work on the face. Um, but I do a lot of work with the face, front of the neck. Um, you know, I guess it's more yeah. Side. Oh, yeah, because yeah, the mask requirement would sort of defeat the working on the face. Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, like I said, I just got guidelines yesterday from the state. So, um, I mean, it's like been less than 24 hours. Some of this information, um, I'm hearing that we can't, I get, you can't do facials right now. So I'm assuming I can't work on the face either. Oh yeah. Um, just need to kind of dig more into the guidelines. Do you, you work in a traditional way with where your clients, when they're face down, they're looking through a face cradle. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to just imagine yeah. like wearing a mask with my head in a face cradle and it doesn't sound yeah. nice. Yeah, I um, have not tried it yet. Um, honestly, I haven't really worn a mask for that long right now. I'm mostly staying home. So, you know, you yeah. order your groceries online, you go pick them up. It's I haven't had to wear a mask for very long. So it's going to be interesting um, for sure. So we'll yeah. see how that goes. I mean, like I said, the sessions are limited to 30 minutes. So I guess the most they need to wear it is 45 at my office by the time they change and check out. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's going to um, be real popular. Yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you being on the Massage Hodge podcast. I, I'd love to chat a few more minutes after this. Uh, we get off this recording, but uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. And to anyone listening, you can subscribe and find us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen. And we'll catch you next time.